Hey, before we get in this episode, can you do us a favor? Will you go ahead and subscribe to the channel? We you ring that notification bell? And if you would, give this video a like. Well, enough of that mumbo jumbo. Let's get to the episode. Let's talk developmentally speaking, glow up, and connecting through wrestling. Hey everybody, I'm Morty. And I'm Brian. And on today's episode of Glow Up, we bring to you the one and only MTV. How you doing? Woo! I am doing so well. How about you guys? Doing well. Thank doing you so great. much for having me today. I'm, I'm really uh, looking forward to speaking with you. Yes. Thank you for coming on. Absolutely. Thank you. It, it is an honor and a pleasure. I'm going to start off with this question that I ask everybody. What got you into wrestling? Well, mine's actually interesting because oh. I am a card-carrying Shakespearean actress and I just wanted to break into the television business and when I would get to casting offices, um, I would go to the audition that I was going to, but then I would look around and see if there were any other auditions going on and I would crash that audition. And Glow is one of the auditions I crashed. I wasn't even there. I was there for a commercial audition and um, I just, you know... Put, wrote down because you have to write down what agency you're from so I just looked and see who was sending people and put down that was my agency and you know got in for the interview and got in front of Matt Simber and spoke to him and and then he offered me to come uh, to Vegas to train because they were doing training for season three and for season three casting and I thought you know this isn't what I you know wanted to do <laughs> but it is it is the largest, most watched, nationally syndicated show in its time slot, and it's a chance for a principal part on a popular show that's shown twice a week. So I thought, yeah, you better go. So I went, and I made it through uh, three of the cuts, and after the third cut, um, they offered me a contract. And I'm telling you right now, five minutes in the ring, I loved it. I got bit by the wrestling bug. I absolutely loved it. It was so much fun. I mean, how much fun is it that you get to, you know, physically <laughs> tussle, yeah. rough and tumble, and play a character? I it, I love it. So you said Shakespearean. Act. Mm -hmm. So does that in, like does that entail like a lot of like Renaissance fairs and stuff like that, or? Do you still do that? Love is not love, which alters when it alterations, finds, or bends with a remover to remove. Oh, no. It is an ever-fixed mark that looks on tempests and is not shaken. It's a star to every wandering bark. Okay, so that's a little Shakespeare. That's the sonnet. <laughs> that's fabulous. Uh, I, no. So, yeah. Oh, oh yes. I, I, I cosplay whenever I can cosplay. Mm -hmm. I... I have a fairy character. I can be a blue fairy. I do elves. Um, wow. I worked with a theater group of pirates for a long time. We had so much fun. That's awesome. We would go on, yeah, costumed um, cruises and mm -hmm. do theater. We did a lot of work with Disney when Disney was doing the pirate movies. We were always their pirates, you know, doing the, oh, the grand great. openings and red carpets and things like that. That was so much fun. That's yeah. fabulous. Because, yeah, I just recently got into going to Renaissance fairs and stuff like oh, that. Oh, aren't they fun? And I, I love them. That I, I would love to find, uh, you know, a niche in that. Like, I would actually like to, to be a, a vendor or something there just because I love the, the environment. It's so cool. Um, there's one uh, near us in, in, well, it's not really near, but it's north of Cincinnati. And it's huge, like, bigger than most theme parks and I just but I got off on a tangent I do apologize I just when you said that then what I, character do you play when you do this what character do you play oh when I go to uh, Renaissance Fair Renaissance Fair yeah I, 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 I've only been to two so I don't have I don't have any costume yet I just Oh. I know. I don't have, but I'm See, looking. That's where the fun is. I actually, yes, I would love you're to. You're indulging your fantasy when oh, you do that. for sure like yeah well you know with my, my shoot last name I actually uh, I've looked up my the kilt that I would get the right Ooh. the right color. I, I'm thinking about doing a kilt and stuff like that. So I think it'd be pretty cool. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I have a um, another friend that I went to uh, high school with. He graduated a few years before me. That was in a um, a comedy troupe. Uh, like I think there's like there's a trio. They're I think they're called Wind and Fire or something like that. And they. <laughs> they, they did a bunch of funny stuff at all the different Renaissance fairs. But back to 
the <laughs> back to glow. Um, sorry, I, I just, that's that's so cool. Um, so you got there, you started bumping in the ring, you caught the bug. Um, mm-hmm. How long did it take for them to give you the MTV character? I right away. I um, well. At night, we would do these. Um, so during the day, we wrestled. We did the wrestling training. And at night, we did acting and improv classes. And Matt wanted people who would be camera ready. So he had us just do characters. Now, in L.A., I had been singing in rock bands. And, uh, you know, it was the 80s. So I dressed up in corsets and crinolines and beads and had my hair all ratted up. And so I showed up one night and played you know, that character, I showed up in that, you know, get up and and did a little improv. And that's when he leaned over to Steve Blantz and said, I'm going to call her MTV and I'm going to have her diving through the ring with a guitar on her back. So that's when he got the, um, the inspiration for the character MTV. And then together he said, I think her first name should be Melody, Melody, sorry, her first name should be Melody and last name Vixen because there's a rock band Vixen. He said, and so what should the middle name be? I'm like, oh, Trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble's always been my middle name. So that is so that's good. That's where we got Melody Trouble Vixen. <laughs> wow. So it, it, it just, it was to, to, to an extent, it was just an extension of you yourself. Well, that's the genius of Matt Simber, mm-hmm. is in developing these characters, he liked to make the characters out of who a person either, like what they did, who they really were, parts of themselves, because it was easier for them to play. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, some of the girls were actresses and trained to be athletes. Some were athletes that had to train to be actresses. I had the rare um, combination of an athletic actress. When I was a kid, I, I grew up on a ranch, and we used to rough and tumble. We did you know, judo. We we taught. We were self-taught judo. We threw each other around. We did acrobatics, and we played stuntman when we were kids. So, yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> a lot of this was the same stuff I had been doing with my brother and sister, like all the flips and flying and and the lifts and things like that. So we already I already knew how to lift my own weight. And it, the wrestling training, I mean, that's why I loved it. Because I'm like, oh, my God, I've been doing this my whole life. Not as, you know, um, skillfully as right. they taught us in the ring. But it was just really right along with my personality and who I was and, and you know, my theater background. It was just a, the perfect combination of, you know, who I am and what I've been doing and, and my um, desire to be on television. Yeah, I... I could totally relate with that. You know, before I got into uh, wrestling, um, I was in drama in high school. Um, I always wrestled around with my buddies. When you know, and it's just I feel like you see all this stuff that says you know it used to before every episode of Raw and SmackDown you'd see don't try this at home. <laughs> well, the people that are re- the people that it's are good wrestling. Advice. Right, that's true. But let's all be honest. The people that are wrestling for them now are the people that tried it at home back then. Yeah. So, so it, yeah. It, it, it's yeah. I could see where where you're you know you're where you were ruffling rough and tumbling and everything with your with your relatives and, and yeah that 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 gave you the right toolbox to have to be in glow. For sure. Well, and we practiced a lot. I mean, we worked on technique and when we were kids, you know, and then in Glow, of course, we trained hard. Mm-hmm. I mean, we trained hard. You know, there, it was it was not for sissies and people got hurt. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could tell if somebody belonged in that ring or not in five minutes, you know, when you're in there with them and they either had it or they didn't. Right. You know. And, and the dangerous ones were the ones you wanted. Yeah, I couldn't, you know, some of them I'm like, oh my God, he has to tell them to leave. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and they did. You know, the ones who couldn't make it did leave. But the ones who did make it were absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love Wrestling Lightning. Mm-hmm. She's, she's an amazing person. She and I, um, we're, you know, n- near the same size. So they would always put us together. So I wrestled her a lot. Yeah, Lightning was a pleasure to have on. She's 
Uh, the thing that the story that she told that, that I, I remember is is how you know you have to stay in character even when you're out in public kayfabe is a thing yes uh, and, and she's like you know how hard it was to be a superhero in public twenty four seven I'm a superhero I'm like that's yeah that'd be kind of rough you know, lightning to me is one of my superheroes because of what she overcame and she's self-made I mean they told her she would never walk again and she rejected that and absolutely taught herself and conditioned herself and learned about how to rehab herself and became a stunt coordinator now I mean she went from person who they said would never walk to somebody who flew in the ring and then somebody who taught other people how to do that I mean, to me, that's a superhero. Oh, yeah. Somebody who says, uh, rejects, you know, you don't have to be what other people tell you to be. Yeah. <laughs> you can sure. be the best person you can be. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's kind of like one of my mission in life is to let people know that, you know, you don't have to just stay where somebody has told you you have to stay. You can improve yourself and be what you want to be. Absolutely. So, Lightning, if you're watching this episode, know that you know it wasn't a gimmick. It, it, you are a real superhero. So, she yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> For that sure. Is, that is very good advice. Like, I, that's where I'm at in life right now. Is yes. That, like I'm trying to do this full time, and, and and I've got three boys. I'm a single parent, and I got to do what's best for them. You know, and it doesn't mean that this small town is what's best for them. The last two years have been so hard for everybody. We have mm-hmm. all lost so much. We've all experienced such loss and change. The change is, is massive. I, the entire world is going through grief and loss issues, mm-hmm. you know? And um, I'm, <laughs> it's funny because, you know, MTV, she beats people up. She's a bad guy, but Eileen's a Reiki practitioner and you know uh, a, an energy worker and healer <laughs> you know <Wow. laughs> part of yeah part of my mission is is to tell people that you know you can change your life mm-hmm. you it, it, if we all try to do some one positive thing every day just one and then build on that and keep you know keep um going forward mm-hmm. and uplifting yourself and um, I have a podcast that I haven't been able to work on lately, but it's called Wrestling with Your Best Friend because that's something that I do every day, our best friend being ourselves. Mm-hmm. Right. And if we can become our own best friend, um, how nice would that be? Then, yep. then we can, um, you know, your best friend loves you unconditionally, is someone who listens, someone who helps you, someone who stands by you no matter what. Can we, what if we could all do that for ourselves? Mm-hmm. You know, how much healing would go on there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> get the butterflies every time before we start this, and he's, he's like, you can do it. We're like, I guess it's just like it's a passion project, so you're like, you don't want to mess it up, and, like, you, you feel so strongly about it, and it's just like, oh, yeah. it's, it's happening now. Like, there, there, there's <laughs> a reason why I start the episodes, so that he, he, so, just ease so that he can it. ease into yeah. it. Once he gets going, he's like a diesel engine. He doesn't want to stop. So, well, yeah. And trust the process, man, because it, you know, you're here for a reason, and you're doing this for a reason. Oh yeah. As it's because you can't not do it. Yep. You know. <laughs> right for sure. So, you said that you were a bad guy, one of the bad girls yeah. of, of Glow. I, in my wrestling majority of my wrestling career, I've been a heel as well. Um, I know in my career, I've had a few of these instances, but did you ever have any instances where people wanted to fight out in public? Um, not really. Really? Uh, now, when, now, in the arena, okay, well, I've been in the arena, and of course, absolutely, yeah. somebody starts booing, and then I get up on the turnbuckle, and I'm like, who said that? Was that you? <laughs> and, and, and of course, you want them, you're popping the crowd, you want them to boo some more, you know, and then they're like, all right, you, come on, get up here, you, you, you sissy. You know, I don't see you up here in this ring. I'm in this ring, but you're not. Come on, you sissy. And of course they can't because security won't let them. And then everybody's, Whoa, you know. And, and then at the end of the show, they're the first ones for autographs. Mm-hmm. You know, That's very the, real. The people yeah. that you chose yeah. on that chose you on. So um, I did have one instance. This was after Glow wrapped, and I was in L.A. doing bit parts in movies. And this one guy came up. 
and he shoved me. And I looked at him, I said, are you out of your mind? What are you doing? And he said, well, you're a wrestler. I thought you'd like that. I said, you know what? Touch me one more time and I'll show you exactly how much I'll like it. <laughs> and, and he said, no, no, thank you, and, and went away. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I thought that was kind of strange that he would have felt entitled to yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah be, being a wrestler doesn't mean somebody can just walk up and physically attack Assault you. you. Like, what, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, I, I like, like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I can I can say that the the worst one I ever got was there's pepper spray involved, Ooh. and uh, that was that was bad. That was yeah. I was leaving a leave, I was leaving a, a gym down in Southern Indiana in Hanover, and I was managing um, uh, Bad Blood was his name, and this lady. Good night just <laughs> got me on the back end of it. She got him good. Just, and then on, on the back end of it, got because we were heels and she was mad that we made her kid cry. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. <laughs> the best one I ever saw do that was Ted DiBiase. Oh. I my. was, yeah, watching, we, we were at WWE way back when, or it was WWE. WWF way mm-hmm. back when, and it was the his his bit where he made the kid dribble the, the basketball, basketball across the, the the ring, and he says, "I'll give you twenty dollars if you can dribble this basketball all the way across the ring." And this kid jumps in, and I mean, he had to be about like seven or eight, and so he starts dribbling, and DiBiase snatches the ball away and says, "Nope, you didn't do it. You can't. You don't get the twenty. And he went. Yeah, yeah, he told, yeah. You, you, you dribble that ball. Was it ten times? You dribble that ball ten times, and I'll give you a hundred dollar bill, kid. And and he gets to he gets to number nine, eight or nine, and Ted just kicks the ball. Oh. That ball away. I had I laughed so hard because that's a heel. Oh, I okay? love it. That's a heel. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. You know there are fans that just don't like you and that's fine um we were doing a show a pay-per-view and i was uh, lee betchley was playing americana and um you know i had a guitar and i went to break the guitar over her because it was supposed to be a breakaway but when i smacked her on the flat of her back it broke at the neck not the body it was supposed to break so <laughs> apparently they hadn't cut it all away so but of course you know we had hide on us so she you know she went down and then they did the bit where they carried her out with the stretcher well after the show a fan of hers comes up to me and is chewing me out one side why did you do that you didn't have to do that you didn't need to hit her with the guitar you know they carried her off and and now now is she okay i'm like Hold on one second. So I went backstage and said, uh, "You need to get out there because this fan of yours is absolutely, you know, frantic that you got, you know, carried out." So she she went out there and talked to him and and you know took pictures and autographs and and then as soon as she walked away, he came back over and chewed me out again. <laughs> he didn't put two and two together that you left and she showed up. <laughs> hey, that's but that's what we're there for. That's right. You know? Yeah. The... I, I, I loved it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So do you do you do anything with wrestling still? Well, um, I get to do something really special. Um, there's a the, the Southern Utah University um, they have a class called the the Phys- physiology and um, philosophy of pro wrestling. Now this is two professors that have put this curriculum together and um, it's it's two classes, a, a psychology and a biology class taught in one. And they wanted to do this as a, no, nobody does this. This is another first. No one has done this before. And I saw in the newspaper, they announced it. And they wanted to have guest lecturers. So I contacted them and told them who I was and that I would love, I have a message for young people. I would love to tell them all, you know, what's it, what it's all about. And so every year they invite me as a guest lecturer to teach a class class there and I mean this is usually what professors they have Mm -hmm. you know right professors guest lecture so this is an honor such an honor for me to do and so I get to teach these kids that you know you don't have to be just one thing you can be a whole bunch of things you don't have to be what a person tells you you have to be Mm -hmm. and I get to tell them all about 
you know, my experience with glow and how it affected me physically, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the damage that we have and, um, you know, sociological ramifications because we were the very first all women's wrestling show. It was absolutely taboo when we were on the air and it changed the sport for women. It changed a lot of sports for women because it just, you know, drop kicked the door open Absolutely. for women to be in combat sports. Absolutely. Um, it did, that didn't happen before us. And at the time it was, oh my God, we were pariahs. <laughs> a lot of people hated us. I mean, we didn't even know that we had done something special until like 30 years later when people said, well, yeah, we're, you know, we want to honor you and give you an award because you were the very first. So, you know, there was a lot that we had to deal with and live with a lot of ridicule, a lot of prejudice, a lot of bias. Mm -hmm. For years, I didn't even tell people that, that this was part of my history because I, it was so controversial wow. and so something that they would attack you for, not celebrate you That's for. That's a shame. So, so getting to go and, and teach this two hour class, you know, every year is, is such an honor for me and I love doing it. It's, it's something that I hope we do, you know, for a long time to come. And, you know, if there's, since COVID, I haven't been to a convention. Um, the last time I got in the ring was um, when we were being um, honored at the Cauliflower Alley Club and in inducted into their Hall of Fame That's... for the accomplishment of being the first um, all women's wrestling show. And since then, I've had a double knee replacement because I could barely walk at that time, mm -hmm. but I still, you know, couldn't not go out and do that. I mean, we were on the outside of the ring, so, but I mean, we still tussled, but um, that was. I think in 2018, but in um, in uh, 2020, I had both knees replaced, and I'm doing really well. Right, I'm, I'm right, walk, right. walking for the first time in 10 years. I'm walking without a cane, with walking unassisted, and you know it's it's been a long. It's a two year. It's awesome. It's a two year rehab. I don't care. They tell you it's two weeks. It's two years. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why we did glow up. Um, as developmentally speaking, we are, you know, we, we talk about developmental territories, which, you know, like OVW, HWA, and all that. Well, I got to thinking glow was really a developmental territory for women's wrestling today and just wrestling in general, let's be honest, and that you guys were the trailblazers. Mm -hmm. and, yes. and we, you know... You, it, you're just now getting the recognition that you deserved all yeah. these years later. It seems like, yeah. and they just didn't. I don't know what their issue was, you know, but you guys were the first, and you deserve to be honored and recognized, and for your stories to be told, and you know, because without you guys, the women's wrestling wouldn't be around today. Well, fortunately. Um there was windows pictures came and did that documentary on us which kind of opened the door yep. and then netflix did a series that was based on the premise of what we did but had absolutely nothing to do with what we did i kind of um equate that to abraham lincoln vampire hunter yeah. you know <laughs> that, that was a good movie yeah. i really liked pride really and prejudice liked was movie. zombies yeah <laughs> but it had nothing to do yeah. with abraham lincoln and anything that he did right. so <laughs> yeah. absolutely but i i do think that they're, they're one of the characters was definitely based off of you oh absolutely they even did a version of my sketch because on the show i did the um mtv we're really rocking tonight at the Glow Disco. Woo! <laughs> that was my sketch. So they did a version. They had Melanie, because um, I was Melody, she's Melanie, you know. And they did, they called it GTV, when, yep. and I'm MTV. So they did a little version of my sketch on that show. That was season two um, episode. I can't remember what episode it was, but, you know, it, it was a actual i mean a 100 percent tribute to, oh, yeah. to my character and what i did on the right, show right. so i appreciate that that was yeah. that was kind of fun yeah. but uh, the ironic thing about that show was all right so they had mostly sketch so i would say probably you know 
40 minutes of sketch and, and, and 15 minutes of wrestling. And we did 40 minutes of wrestling and 15 minutes of sketch. So it was like kind of the exact opposite <laughs> <laughs> of what we did. That was like, okay. That's pretty ir ironic. But. Talking about the uh, 2012 documentary, right? 2012. Yes. Yeah. So growing up, I remember when I was younger, my dad talking about glow and you know, YouTube hadn't came out yet. I didn't know what it was. So, so I always heard my dad talking about it. And then once, oh, 2007, 2005, two, I, whenever YouTube came out, I remember the, watching wrestling stuff. And I remember, oh, dad used to talk about this show. What was it called? And I looked it up. And that's when I, you know, was, my eyes were open to it. There wasn't much back then on there. Um, yeah. But when I, the documentary came out. Um, I remember seeing it on Netflix, yes. and just it you know, for, you know just for a few years from when I first started looking to, to to then it absolutely just YouTube had filled up with videos. Oh yeah, because I went back to look, and I was like, wow. So I just started. I, I wish, and I don't know. I I haven't search for this recently because we've been so busy with the podcast but I wish there was an actual um, library that I could look at it. well it's on Tubi and it's on Amazon is it really yes they call it the original ladies of wrestling and it's some kind of bootleg that they changed it's still glow yeah. it's listed as original ladies of wrestling but it's still glow oh. they just they kind of overdubbed the music which <laughs> when I edit, okay, I, I edit, you know, my videos, and I'm meticulous with matching the soundtrack and, and tracking. I mean, even the timing of things. It, it's an art. You have to have that inner Jedi of timing to, to match <laughs> things, and, and I do. And, and when I'm hearing this soundtrack, it drives me crazy. I'm like, just turn it down. Where's my <laughs> EQ? I want to remove that soundtrack because it... It just it distracts me from the original soundtrack, which is still under there. Mm -hmm. So I think if they change the music a little bit, it, it somehow changes copyright. I don't know. Probably. But yeah. yeah. She made a made a, a Star Wars reference. Yes. So oh, uh, that's dude. your bag. I know. <laughs> that's him. Made a Star Wars reference. Oh, that's awesome. I am the biggest Star Wars geek there is. You're, Ask me anything. You're, 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 <laughs> All right, I will. I will. Does it have to be canon? Um, I don't know. It may. It may. I, okay, I, I I'll ask you. Um, um, according to um, the books, IG88, the assassination droid, was how many forms of them were there of him? According to the books, I'm sorry I didn't read the books. I'm just the movies. But I did see in um, in uh, Mandalorian and Boba Fett, they have, I think, two? It's uh, IG-11 in the Mandalorian. Oh, okay. Yes, but okay. So that, that that's that's fine. That was a really tough question. There's, yeah, it is. Of course, I don't even know if it's I don't even know if it's canon anymore. But the but IG88, which which you knew who I was talking about when I said IG88 yes. because you mentioned the one in Mandalorian. Um, yes. IG88, he the non I don't know if it's, I'm gonna say it's non-canon probably now. The story was was that he um, became sentient as soon as it was created. As soon Ooh. as I and put the thoughts into four other bots. So there were five IG eight ah, eights. Okay. The original IG eight A, B, C, and D. And kind of sounds like Westworld. It, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, they they had a hive mind. Mm -hmm. They had a hive mind. Yeah. They, yeah. And basically they all ended up getting destroyed. Um, except well, they all got destroyed, but the last one to survive was IG8, IG88B, I believe, and it's the last thing it did was jacked into the Death Star and became the Death Star right before the Rebels blew him up. 
Oh man. Yeah, so that that that's I don't know, that's one of my favorite stories. You know stories. what? You win the prize. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I don't know. That's just one of my one of my favorite I guess now non-canon stories. But sorry, I, you talked about you said Star that's Wars. Right. That's something I never knew, but that's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's there's a lot of cool <laughs> stuff that, you know, that, that they've left out or they even added some cool stuff like when they re and this will be my last thing we'll get back to glow i'm sorry she, <laughs> she said so she said jedi and I'm, I'm just i know yeah yeah so i don't remember what episode it was but when they remastered um and ep- one of the episodes of star wars they actually put in um a certain spaceship leaving one of the ports and taking off ah. and that is um dash rendar's ship it's uh, basically like the little sister to the Millennium Falcon, and um, it's from the N64 game, Nintendo 64 game, Shadows of the Empire. So well, they do these little are things not like that. The ships you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you could, uh, do you have any other questions, or uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do the wrap-up question. No. Uh, so, go ahead. All these years later, would you feel that Glow? It, it, it has a cult following. The fans are very loyal. They're very dedicated. It, it's truly a testament of what you guys did back then. You know, 30-plus years later, they still want more. They still, like, they embrace you guys on every platform, every appearance, every. I have loved every cruise that I've gone on with them. I've loved every convention where I get to hang out with them and spend time with them. We call our fans the family because they're they're not blood but they're more than fans and they're more than friends um this one guy um told me and i had no idea that that you know glow had this influence he said that you know he was a young man young gay man and was afraid to come out to his parents so he was gonna kill himself because he was just thought that this was the end of everything for him and then he saw mtv on glow bouncing around that ring in that outrageous costume with those these crazy costume colors and he thought wait a minute if she can do that on national tv in front of god and everybody i could certainly come out to my parents and he did and he you know he decided not to not to kill himself that that you know what people can be themselves people can put themselves out there and 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 be who they want to be and and not you know the world doesn't end So I had no idea when I was playing MTV, bouncing around the ring, just having fun. I mean, having the time of my life. And you don't think that you're going to influence someone like that in a positive way. And I'm so glad that 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 did happen for some people. I'm, I'm glad that people were just entertained and had a good time because I was having a good time. And I am so thankful and so absolutely honored that people still want to be a part of it and still enjoy the humor of the show because number one first and foremost we were a comedy show that used wrestling as the vehicle and we did some amazing wrestling i mean fiji picked me up over her head and threw me out of the ring you know and i i loved it i loved flying and i am just so glad that you know people are still interested because it's if I could still do it, I would. And who knows? Um, you know, one of these days, I'll I'm gonna see if I can, you know, get back into a shape where I could get in the ring. You know, not for a whole lot, but just you yeah. know to have fun. Oh, you know, we could be a tag team, and I'll let you do the hot tag. All right. That's all you gotta do. Do the hot tag. Yeah, well, yeah, for sure. Um, Woo! Yeah. Um, and also, if you if you ever you know get back on the convention circuit and. Um, Reach out. We would love to have you as our guest at a convention sometime. Oh, absolutely, We're to absolutely. Try one I'm just, I, I'm not brave enough to get in a crowd yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, because with with this COVID is still out there. Mm-hmm. We're we're not over. We're getting better, but our yeah. pandemic is not over. No, you know, I, and I I, 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 I had COVID two sure. weeks ago, so <laughs> I want to be I sure we it. can gather safely. You know, I don't want to yeah. be part of the spreader event. So, right. you know, maybe next year. I'm hoping next year that things are, are you know better for sure, and that traveling is easier. Oh yeah, and people aren't trying to kill each other. You know, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah, I say absolutely a lot. 
I've realized that just now. <laughs> Absolutely. 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 So in closing, if there was any advice that you can give to any upcoming um, wrestler, um, what would it be? It would be follow your heart, follow your dream, find out what you can do and, and do it the best way that you can. Don't let anyone tell you that you're anything but the beautiful artist that you are because you're the one creating this character. You're the one creating this reality. Um, you know, only do what you love because if you don't love it, then don't do it because it's, it's not gonna serve you. And you can be anything that you want to be. So that's my advice. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, love, you know, connecting on things outside of glow even star wars renaissance fairs all that thank you so much um, my pleasure thank you so much for having me it's been fun thank you have a great one bye hey everybody it's morty it's brian and thank you for watching today's episode of developmentally speaking if you could please click that subscribe button and don't forget to punch that bell icon so you can get notified whenever we go live or drop a new video every monday well thanks for watching guys and we'll see you on the next Developmentally Speaking.